Hey, hey, welcome back. On my way home, I am Miss Mandy, and today we are kicking off a three-part video series about money habits. And because, well, I'm the only one in the car, we're gonna be talking about my money habits, where they came from, if they're in my nature or not, um, and what effect they've had on my financial situation to this point. Uh, you're gonna get all the juicy details. Don't worry. We're gonna get to the you know the things I've done wrong with money. There have been quite a lot of them, including how I got myself in over one hundred thousand dollars. Yes, I said one hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. But first, I want to go over the good ones because I believe strongly that in order to be a success, you have to study success. You have to study successful people and the methods that they use to make themselves successful. So we're going to go over the good and then in the later parts, we're going to go over the bad and the ugly. Okay. So just forget about that. Hang on for that. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see those and get notified about those. Um, today we're going over the good ones and to get started, let's go with number one. The first money habit for success is saving money. Now I'm a natural saver. I realize not everybody is and that's okay. If we were all the same, the world would be a very, very boring place indeed. But it comes naturally to me to save. When I was a kid, I loved watching my jar stack up with coins. Later, I loved watching my bank account, you know, stack up with dollars. And you know, who, who doesn't love that? I still love that to this day. I am a natural saver. It comes very naturally to me. And I think that's a great money habit to have because in order to build wealth, you kind of have to have some skin in the game. You have to have some down payment for a rental property or, you know, um, a down payment for a business loan or something like that. You have to have money to make money in so sometimes. And um, it, sometimes it doesn't have to be a lot. Sometimes you can get by I, off, you know, nothing. I'm sure there's ways. I just have never done it myself. But I feel a lot safer knowing that I have the capability of saving money in order to start things that will make me more money. Great habit for building wealth. The second money habit for success is creating cash flow early in life. I have made it no secret that I have had a job since I was 16. My parents have had jobs in their teen years. My grandparents had jobs in their teen years. And as generations went on, obviously, I had less need of a job at 16 than my grandfather had, but it, I still went to work every day after school. You know, I was part of a co-op program where I would get out of school a little bit early and use my study hall to go to work. And I would work from two to five every day, and then I would go home and do homework. And that would be kind of my day. And I think it taught me a lot about work ethic. I think it taught me a lot about how money is earned and trading your time and skills for money and what skills are needed to make money. But um, I'm just gonna say that what I did with those funds because they were not necessity to me, I did not need them to live off of. My parents, you know, supported me at that time in my life. And because I didn't need them and because I didn't know much about money management or what to do with that kind of money, I. You'll, you'll just see them later in the bad and ugly parts of this video. Um, so not the fact that of what I did with it, but the fact that I was able to earn money and create cash flow at a young age. I don't care how you're creating cash flow at a young age. Yeah, there's probably better ways to do it, especially if you're using assets and teaching your kids to use assets to create cash flow. Wow, I'd love to get to that point myself. But the way I did it was just fine too. Creating cash flow at an early age is a great skill to have. Uh, let's see. The third money habit for success was being able to educate myself. I love to learn, but I really hated school, especially high school, because the further along we got, it seemed like there were more and more, you know, subjects that I knew wouldn't be applicable in my chosen fields. <laughs> Algebra. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, now the older I've gotten, the more I realize that there are lots and lots of things that I wish that they would teach and don't, instead of all the things that I would never use in my life. And I think that's a flaw in the educational system. I've spoken before about how I went to college, and because I had no direction, a lot of it's on me, you know. I had no, no real direction for my education. I didn't really get a lot of skills that I could use in a marketable space, but... 
being able to educate myself has been really helpful because when I learned that, you know, schools never taught me money management and my parents, they have a different philosophy about money than I do, which is totally fine. I want to build wealth, whereas they, they want, you know, different things with their money and that's cool. But I really want to build a large amount of wealth so that I can, you know, leave a legacy behind. I can help more people. Uh, and the, the truth is the more money you have, the more people you can help. And the more people you help, the more money you have, right? So being able to educate myself is key in this area because it is not taught anywhere that I know of in schools. And I needed to know these things. So I've turned to books, videos, podcasts. I, I you know, learned about Dave Ramsey and the Total Money Makeover. And then I, I learned about Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad and Poor Dad. Now I have a lot of mentors on YouTube, including Garrett Gunderson, who talks about building wealth without a scarcity mindset. And each of these teachers has their own value and had their own value to me. And I get to pick and choose at what point in my life their advice applies to me, which is awesome. That's the beauty of self-educating. You know, it's an awesome skill to be able to learn um, what you need to know in order to reach your goals. And I think I have that skill and I like it. I think it's a great money, money management skill and a great skill for success. The fourth uh, money habit for success is the B word budgeting. Um, wah -wah. I know everybody hates budgeting, but I actually kind of secretly love it. I like knowing where my money goes. I'm a little bit of a control freak in that way. I want to know where money comes in. I want to know down to the penny where it's going out. And I want to know down to the penny what exactly I can spend. And budgeting allows me to do all of that. Um, I came from kind of a scarcity mindset. I We were never poor. We had food and a roof over our heads. But we did struggle. My mom was the sole breadwinner in our house. And um, because of that, you know, funds were not always readily available to us. So while we didn't suffer, we, um, we did have tight days. Like I think everybody goes through times where money is tight. Um, but we, we had those. And as a kid, you know, I, I didn't recognize those so much, but now looking back, I can recognize knowing their situation. I can know that they probably struggled a little bit with finances and being able to budget for me has been a great skill because when I things were tight for me and my husband when we first got married and we needed to tighten our budget I can naturally do that and it's easy for me to cut expenses um, now I could by myself live on very little and you know live in a hole in the ground and have no expenses and my husband keeps me from doing that which is great because I think you need to have a healthy balance of those things you need to have you know being able to cut is great but being able to spend is great too I think you need a balance of those two. The fifth money management skill for success is, or the money habit for success is bank account separation. Now we're getting into the ones that I have applied a little bit later in life. Um, up till now they've been kind of inherent ones or ones that I learned in my youth. And now we're getting into the things that I've learned more recently. Um, when I was studying Dave Ramsey, I learned about the envelope system and because we had no control over our spending at the time. We we needed the envelope system in cash. We did it in cash. We would pull out our cash every week that we needed for our separate envelopes and we would store those in our house in cash. And you know, as time went on and we got better about our spending, the cash was less necessary. So we ended up doing it within our bank accounts. And I started opening separate bank accounts for each kind of thing that we were saving for. And I did a whole video on this. If you want to uh, see more and know more about our 10 bank accounts, go check that out. But um, it's been an awesome thing for us. I love having it separate. My brain just needs that separation of space. I cannot mentally separate it. Now I just know, you know, what's in my bank account is what I have to spend. Um, the next money habit for success is prioritizing cash flow. Again, more recently, I've learned that cash flow is the key to wealth building, and I want as much flowing into me as possible, but not as much flowing out. I want assets that create cash flow so that I can earn it without having to work. And the more I learn about it, the more I know that cash flow is king. And here, here's just a few ways I've captured cash flow in the, the past couple months. One, I've stopped paying the IRS so much, fixed my W-2 so that um, I'm not getting much of a refund. Instead, I'm getting the money that 
I earn up front instead of giving a interest-free loan to the government to be paid back next year sometime when they decide to give it back to me. Um, I refinanced our house recently. In this past December, I refinanced our house and saved over $600 in cash flow. If you want to know more about that, I made a video on it. Go check that out. Um, I've renegotiated bills that mysteriously went up and got a lower rate on those. You know, saving cash flow again. I have built an emergency fund and that allowed us to, you know, raise our, our insurance deductibles, which gave us more coverage. So more valuable, more value for the same or less cost. Those are just a few ways. There's a lot of ways to increase your cash flow. I have a couple videos on it. There's tons more out there. If that's something you're interested in, go check all that out. The next money habit for success is automating my income. This has been a game changer. I've really gotten into this the last couple of years and especially in the last month or two. Um, I went from spending hours on our budget, doing it by hand, literally with a calculator, doing it on hand, writing it down, and then posting it on a notes app for my husband and I to be able to view it anytime. And that was before I separated our bank accounts into everything that you know needs separated so that I had to subtract our expenses from that. Now I have a separate account that, you know, and it has auto transfers to and from it and it just makes everything so much easier. Now when I get paid, everything goes where it needs to go automatically without my input. And I have a huge mental weight lifted off of me. Um, not only that, but it saves me a crap ton of time tons of time. The last money habit for success is taking the emotion out of money. I am naturally good at this. Some people, you know, humans are emotional beings. Some people are just more emotional than others. I happen to be somebody who's not that emotional and I don't have a lot of attachment to things. That is my personality. I've never named and well, I mean, our, our van has a name. I've never loved a car like that. I have never, you know, I didn't get sad when we moved out of our apartment that we had lived in for seven years. That didn't make me sad at all. Um, and you know, sometimes those sentimental things can get to a person and keep you, hold you back. And I would argue that a lot of times emotion is not good in money because when emotion gets inserted into money, you allow fear into your money management decisions. And when fear is in your money management decisions, you don't tend to make the best choices. I mean, fear is exactly why, you know, the Great Depression happened. The stock market crashed because people pulled all their stocks out of fear. And um, I tend to think that it's just kind of better to separate the emotion of those things versus the actual financial numbers. It's also a good money ha habit to be, to have because, you know, when you're analyzing deals, and I'm not to this point yet, but when you're analyzing deals, it's nice to be able to see the numbers and make decisions based solely on the numbers, not on the emotional gut that happens, you know, the gut, the visceral reaction that happens because it could be easy, you know, to try and help somebody out with a loan, but they're not great. They're not going to repay the loan on paper, but they really need it in real life. That, that can be a hard decision to make and a hard situation to get out of. Um, so yeah, I just, I naturally that happens to me. I, separate money from emotion, but you know, sometimes that doesn't come so easily to other people, but a good skill to have all the same. Now, I think it's really important to wrap this up and note that I've spent 16 years, so half of my life to get to the point where I am now, and I'm just beginning to build wealth. I'm nowhere near farther along, far along this path. Um, so if you're just getting started, I say cool, because even if I stopped today with all the skills that I have today and I stopped trying to earn money and I just stayed at the job I'm at and, you know, didn't earn any more for the rest of my life, I would still be a lot happier than if I never started this journey anyway. So just know that it does take time. And like I said earlier, when you're ready to learn about a subject and if you have that ability to educate yourself, the right teacher will appear. You know, Dave Ramsey appeared right at the moment where we needed to get out of debt and start managing our money better. And he's great at teaching that. He's great at giving you a plan for that. Robert Kiyosaki arrived right at the moment where I realized, hey, saving money is not really my thing because I really want to earn more money and I want to learn how to invest. 
And then Garrett Gunderson arrived right at the moment where I thought, okay, well, I've scrimped and saved and pinched pennies as much as I can. And how I need to know how to build wealth um, without doing that or without doing that so much. I need to know how to enjoy myself and my life while I build wealth. So yeah, when, when you're ready, a, a teacher will appear and you'll know more about a subject. And that's all I got. I'm home. So I'm going to get off here and I will see you in the next installment of this three-part video series about money habits. Bye.